Hello. Care to join us, Mr. Chen? No, thanks. I gotta walk. Uh, taking a little stroll? That's the spirit. Please, I I'd like my parachute now. Why, these planes are perfectly safe, Mr. Chan. And besides, San Francisco reports clear weather ahead. How far ahead? Oh, a few hours. A few hours? You're not worried, are you, Mr. Chan? Oh, no. No. Well, statistics prove that you're far safer in a modern plane than you would be in your own bathtub. I I'd rather be taking a bath. Tell me, how old are you? 21. 21, eh? If I reach my next birthday, well, according to my insurance figures, you can expect 45.16 more years of life. Barring, of course, fatal accident. Oh. Hi, Jimmy. Give me a hand, will you? I'm on the last chapter of this yarn. What would a fellow do, a fellow like you, if faced with certain deaths? Oh. Pop. Pop. Before it's too late, I think there's something you ought to know. Number two son resembled criminal, about to make confession. I don't know whether I've told you yet or not, but I think you're the swellest papa fella ever had. Humble parent thanks unsettled weather for expression of love from favorite offspring. Oh, but I mean it, Pop. Honest. Then do not let fair skies tomorrow change restless mind. Oh, I won't. I'll get right on the train and go back to school. Appreciate decision. One scholar in family better than two detectives. Well, Charlie, this will make a lot of people's hair stand on end. Don't tell my readers, but the real mystery in this whodunit is how I ever finished it. Only diligent workmen can survive Hawaiian hospitality. Yeah, what a vacation. Stella was right. This trip blew the cobwebs out of my head. There's one wife in a million, Charlie. Correction, please. Also have excellent wife in same million. Wife, after giving you 13 kids, she's an institution. Sorry, Mr. Gregory, I don't want my manuscript mixed up. You can buy a copy after publication. It'll cost you $2. I go to a lending library. Friend? Pest. Says he's an insurance actuary. Had the bungalow next to mine at Waikiki. And when he wasn't annoying me, he was shooting little birds with a 22. Strange for man who gambles on life for business to cause death for pastime. Who oh, can't anybody talk about anything but death? Don't worry, Jimmy. It'll soon be over. Radiogram for you, Mr. Essex. Thanks. Oh, Pop, I, I feel silly. Most usual. Unhappy news sometimes corrects self next day. What month is Scorpio? Scorpio? Uh, October. Tomorrow is first day of Scorpion symbol in Chinese calendar. You believe in astrology? No. No, this is something else. Paul, could old friend help relieve distress? No, thanks, Charlie. I've got to send a radio. Well, I hope that isn't bad news. Well, what is not bad news? That radiogram he just got. How did you know Mr. Essex received message? Oh, the steward brought it to me by mistake. Why, Pop, he's a... Please. This is the only way to travel. Imagine San Francisco already. There's the World's Fair, Treasure Island. Oh, that's where we're gonna land. Oh, it looks like a big wedding cake. What's that big tower out there? That's the Chinese pagoda. No, Which that's one? the Tower of the Sun. It is oh. the Chinese pagoda. The smaller one's the Tower of the Sun. Oh, I see, but then... Gee, Pop, I hope Mr. Essex isn't missing any of this. <laughs> Don't miss the view, Mr. Gregory. It's the fair. I'll wait and see the one in New York. If you would, I'll take California. Hey, Mr. Essex, come over on this side. Maybe you can see your wife from here. Hey, Mr. Essex, wake up. Paul. Paul. Pop. Hey, Pop. Something's wrong. Paul. He must be sick. Take your seats, please. We're landing. Your seats, please. Something wrong? Is he... Dead? Must have been his heart. What's the truth? Oh, Go back to your seats, please. We're about to land. 
Please be seated. I wonder what happened. Look, Pop, the radiogram was on the floor. Sign of Scorpio indicates disaster if zodiac obligations ignored. Unsigned. Zodiac? Isn't that the chart astrologers use to tell fortunes? And Scorpio, I believe, is the unfortunate symbol of death. Not correct, but thank you. All luggage to be inspected at customs. All luggage to be inspected at customs. All luggage to be inspected at customs. Say, Pop, have you seen Paul's briefcase? No. It was here a minute ago. Where's Gregory? Perhaps we'll find same holding briefcase in customs. Why, I'll take care of him. Say, Pop, I, I just thought, Paul's wife, if she's there to meet him, uh, what are you going to tell her? Only that which comes from her. Oh. Hi, Ed. I'd better go back to customs and try to find Gregory Potton. Hello, Charlie. It's grand to see you again. Where's Paul? Oh, uh, you don't know my uncle, Mr. Redley. I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Chan. Thank you. Stella, wish tongue could find words to tell you. What's keeping Paul? Oh, you've no idea how I've missed him this past month. Impossible to miss someone who will always be in heart. <laughs> Why, everybody's gone. I don't see him. Where is he, Charlie? Stella. Is that someone from the plane? Most unhappy accident. Something's happened to Paul. Strength of heart not equal to homecoming. Paul's dead? Oh, no! Oh, Paul! I knew there was something wrong. This strange radiogram. It came last night. We couldn't understand it. Can't escape Zodiac. Goodbye, my love. Paul. May I see, please? We don't know what he meant by that word, Zodiac. Paul certainly didn't believe in astrology. Think best you take Mrs. Essex home now. We'll join you there. Oh, uh, did he finish the manuscript? There's a check waiting for it from his publisher. Please, what is your interest in saying? Why, I handled his business affairs. Uh, better to consider Mrs. Essex at this time. Yes. Cab, sir? Uh, thank you. May I reserve one, please? Number eight up. Get in. Uh, must wait for sun. That's all right, sir. You can wait in the cab. Oh. Excuse, please. Have no wish to intrude. Wanted private cab. Never mind what you wanted. Stay put. And don't try anything funny. Something very funny in being taken prisoner in broad daylight in city renowned for hospitality. You're going to get plenty of hospitality. Hope hospitality will have same generous size as shoes of brother policemen. I would go the rim. We couldn't put anything over on you, Charlie. <laughs> Some bitch, eh, Charlie? <laughs> recognize your hand in joke, Mr. Kilvain. But well, we just couldn't let you slip into town without a welcome, Charlie. Uh, appreciate most hospitable welcome, but have matter of importance which need attention first. Oh, don't give me that. Come on into my office. It's been a long time since I've seen you, Charlie. You and I are going to have a good old-fashioned chin first, Charlie. How's everything in Honolulu? Anybody stealing pineapples? What are you honing in for? Charlie doesn't want to be interviewed. Interview my eye. I've known Charlie ever since I started covering the police platter at the old Powell Street station. Police reporter Pete Lewis, friend of many years. Well, I'm on time. Oh, it's you. Say, isn't that sign private on my door big enough for you? Forget it. I told him to meet me here. Fred, I want you Don't to Don't tell me. Charlie Chan. I'd know that face any place. Can return compliment. You are a magician named Radini. Cannot forget what you borrow five years ago for a trick and return in many pieces. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky you got it back at all. Regini's improved now, Charlie. He's a big shot. Has his own theater, the Temple of Magic on Treasure Island. 
And my paper's backing him in an expose of fake psychics. Would you like to see some of my press clippings? Pete's paper's offering $1,000 to any psychic, phony or otherwise, whose stunts I can't duplicate on the stage of my theater. And so far, no one's collected, not even the great Dr. Zodiac. Zodiac? Yeah, he's the big shot in the spook racket around here. The only trouble is, he won't fall for our challenge. He won't come out in the open where I can get at him. Now listen, you two mugs. If you don't mind, I got Charlie up here for a little private conversation. He's heard all he wants about black magic. No, no, most interesting. Sometimes black magic, very close relative to black male. Now who said anything about black male? Why don't you get it? Those phony psychics dig up the dirt, hand it over to the customers in the seance, then hold them up. That might be the reason for those three suicides recently. Say, they all happen to be clients of Dr. Zodiac. Yeah, but they're dead. They can't help us prove anything. And the living ones won't talk because they're afraid of rattling the skeletons in the family closets. Ah, you're talking through your hat. If there was any evidence connecting Zodiac with those suicides, I'd... But what can I do without evidence? Uh, very little, perhaps. But we'll ask coroner to perform autopsy on the body of Paul Essex, who died most suddenly on China Clipper this morning. Essex, mystery writer? He took a trip to Honolulu about six weeks ago to write a story about the spook racket? Say, we were talking about Zodiac. Or does that connect up? It might, if Essex was a client of Dr. Zodiac's. Come on, Charlie, what are you holding back? Did you speak to Essex before he died? Did he tell you anything? Was he a client of Dr. Zodiac? Did he commit suicide? Please, please, cannot answer question now. But in humble opinion, suicide induced by blackmail is murder. So sorry. Must leave now to meet unfortunate widow, Mrs. Essex. Excuse, please. Excuse. Give me that telephone. Outside. This is for official business. Hey, Charlie said he was going to meet Paul Essex's wife. Why don't we get you ten? He's on his way to Zodiac's right now. And he'll get in. Come on, what are we waiting for? To give him a head start. Then we'll crash Zodiac's gate with him. Hey, Pop. The taxi starter at the airport told me a couple of fellows brought you here. What's up? They merely brought greetings from old friend Deputy Chief Kilvane. Oh. I didn't find Paul's briefcase. Gregory gave me the slip at customs. But if we could get a hold of that manuscript... Please remember, have given trusting parent promise to apply mental ability to school books. Mr. Chad, got a message for you. Oh. What is it? What is it, Pop? Here. Engage rooms at St. Francis Hotel. And when Mrs. Essex call, say will be delayed. But what's in the note? Ancient Chinese proverb, badly misquoted. Should read, do not challenge supernatural unless armed with sword of truth. Nothing doing. I know this poop joint. Full of dead people talking their heads off. <laughs> well, Charlie, fancy meeting you here. An anticipated fancy. Surprised you did not arrive first. Oh, let me introduce Professor Bixby of Berkeley, great psychologist. Mr. Chun? Most happy to meet eminent professor of magic hiding under psychological whiskers. Quiet, Charlie. I told you we couldn't fool him. If Zodiac finds out Regini's with us, he'll never let us in. Yeah, he's thrown me out a dozen times, but I figured I could sneak in this time under the hair mattress. We'll make first test of Dr. Zodiac's mystic powers on penetrating false whiskers. Let's go. Excuse, please. May consult with Dr. Zodiac? Dr. Zodiac will be happy to receive the celebrated detective Charlie Chan and his friends. Thank you so much. It beats me, Charlie. That face of yours can open more doors than a pass key. Dr. Zodiac is native of San Francisco. Dr. Zodiac is a native of the universe. He knows all things about all people. Follow me, please. In this room, gentlemen, 
Make yourselves comfortable, please. I will announce you to Dr. Zodiac. Boy, what a layout. Say, I couldn't put on a better act myself. He's got all the props, incense, music. Advice, caution, even draperies may have ears. What a lot of phony junk. No, very genuine and valuable antiques. Table lamp of ancient Egypt, Ramesses dynasty. This is Persian sacrificial knife. Also very, very old. Dr. Zodiac, the eye of Allah Mata. Mr. Chen, I am honored. Thank you. Privilege is mine. It certainly is a privilege, Dr. Zodiac. I'm Pete Lewis of the Chronicle. How do you do, Mr. Lewis? I have heard of your campaign to expose the charlatans who prey on a too susceptible public. I heartily agree with it. And I'm Professor Bixby of Berkeley. I'm profoundly interested in your work, Doctor. Thank you. Be seated, gentlemen. You will make a most intelligent and unusual circle. How can I serve you? Humbly request you penetrate beyond the mystic veil of life and communicate with friend recently departed. That is the supreme demonstration. Please join me in silent meditation while I seek my control. An Egyptian priestess who passed beyond 3,000 years ago. message for Mr. Chan? There is someone newly arrived in the spirit world who wishes to get through to Mr. Chan. I will help him. He is a man who was named Paul Ethics. Ask the question that fills your mind, Mr. Chan. Paul, old friend, Charlie Chan most grieved, cannot understand death which struck so suddenly. My heart, my heart was tired, stopped. Who drove you to suicide? No suicide. Then you were not victim of blackmail? There was no blackmail. What was meaning of radiogram? Cannot escape Zodiac. The stars were against me. Can you explain more clearly, please? Paul Essex is not strong enough yet to talk any longer. Do either of the other gentlemen care to ask a question? Yes, I'd like to know something about a girl. And she's not in the spirit world, either. You want to know about a girl named Eve Cairo. You must not think of marrying her. She is psychic. She is one of us. You must not interfere with her work. So that's what you've been telling Eve. Oh, I know she comes here. Well, you might have her buffalo, but you don't fool me. Oh, I've had enough of this, Faker. How can you sit there and insult our intelligence? I'm going to expose your tricks. Stay where you are, Mr. Adini. So you thought that I would not see through your childish disguise. I would have let it pass in respect to Mr. Chen had you not shown your hand. Now leave this house. Why, oh, you cheap four-flusher, I'll give you a blast in print. I'll run you right out of this town with the rest of the Jip fortune tellers. If you do, Mr. Lewis, your paper will pay me a large sum for damages. I do not predict the future. What you witnessed here was a scientific demonstration. Regret most sincerely unfortunate termination of seance. I accept your apology, Mr. Chen. I know these two gentlemen forced their company on you when you entered my house. My servant will see you out. Good day. 
Are we going to let him get away with that? We ought to take the place apart. Would not recommend violence. Have no authority to intrude on privacy without search warrant. The fee for the consultation, gentlemen, will be $20. What? what? Try and get it. If request music, must be willing to pay for Fiddler. I could get your whole orchestra for that price. Should not complain. Received most enlightening message concerning lady friend. Well, even I are going to get married, no matter what that faker had to say. Eve Carr is part of my act, Charlie. Pete met her through me. She's tops in mind reading. Mind reading? She's on a level, Charlie. Her stuff's no gag. And I'm going to have a showdown with her tonight. She's not coming here anymore. Very wise. Dr. Zodiac, man of great ego, enjoys using power to dominate lives of others. Advice, caution, to destroy false prophet, must first unmask him before eyes of believers. Yes, please. Oh, hello, Mr. Kilvane. You get autopsy report? You had a hunch, Charlie. There was enough poison in Paul Essex's stomach to have polished off ten men. Think it was plain suicide or fancy murder? Voice of crime still very faint. Think it best you tell newspapers coroner reports suicide. Pete tells me you sprung the blackmail angle on Zodiac. What's up, Charlie? Was he squeezing Paul Essex? Hunch say yes, but facts say maybe. We we'll keep you informed. Goodbye. Good evening, Mr. Chen. May I have a minute of your time? Do you have a son named Jimmy Chan? Wearer of disguise, only full chambermaid. Oh, gee, Pop. Father who depends on son is happy or foolish, according to son. Please, job. Hey, this is my tie. My best tie. Little Mouse Lucky, his clothes do not fit elephant. You haven't asked me where I've been. Looking for Mr. Gregory. Yeah. I checked at several hotels, and I found him, too. He's registered at the Walling, and he's got Paul's briefcase with him. But when he saw Busybody's son, he vanished. That's right. When he saw me, he ducked out of the lobby, and then I lost him. What time was this? Gee, Pop, I'm awfully sorry. I didn't look at the time. Was Gregory at Hotel Walling at 4 o'clock? Yes. No, uh, earlier, I think. Yes, earlier. No, I'm not sure. But if it's important, I can check. Right now, check into dress clothes. Where are we going? I have invitation to a small party Mr. Radini gives on Treasure Island. You don't like parties. I'm anxious to make acquaintance of girlfriend of newspaper man. Girl who believes and obeys Dr. Zodiac. But I'd like to help out. We've got to find that briefcase. Can best help out by disguising self as obedient son for a few hours. Come. Don't wait for me, Pop. See you later. What you say? Hello, Emma. How are you? The swell of you to come. Please. Glad to see you. Make yourself at home, will you? Why aren't you serving? You told me to act like a guest, didn't you? Now, look, Elmer, I only asked you to be helpful. Now, leave the food alone. What's the matter? Isn't it any good? <laughs> okay, I can take a hand. I've been anxious to meet you, Mr. Chan. Also happy to meet future wife of old friend. Very future. I'll have a long white beard down the here if she keeps holding out. He told me what you're up to, Mr. Chan, and you're wrong. Dr. Zodiac's a genius. You'll never expose him as a fraud. Don't stop a fellow from trying. Pete, if I have any gift for reading minds... There's no then... argument about that. Then others can be gifted to read the future. Can't tell if anything is on mind of that young man. Ah! Oh, hello, darling. 
Sally. Hello, Mr. Sibley. Still monopolizing Mr. Chan? Won't you give poor little me a chance to talk to him? Here he is. Talk your head off. Tell him what a great guy Zodiac is. Now, Pete, none of that. Sometimes I think she steers for him. What on earth do you mean? You got Eve to go to Zodiac. She was saying till then. Darling, she didn't make me go. You never had a rival you met him. You better get ready, Eve. You're on soon. Yes. Excuse us, please. Well, Bessie, I see you've cornered Mr. Chan. You better watch out, Charlie. Mrs. Sibley thrives on scandal and husbands. Never let one go around with a must-up tie. You uh, better not let my wife catch you doing this. She knew she was marrying a popular man, didn't she? Yeah. She hasn't asked for a divorce yet, either. <laughs> well, let's sit down. Oh, hello, Myra, darling. Where have you been? Behaving myself. Do you know Mrs. Rodini? We've met. Now, who on earth must you up? Huh? Oh. Does anybody want some of this stuff? It ain't bad. No, Elmer. Well, I just said it ain't bad, that's all. The people my husband picks up. Anything for a laugh. Myra, darling, you're not looking a bit well. Haven't Dr. Zodiac been able to cheer you up? I wouldn't believe that faker under oath. Then why go to him? It was Mrs. Sibley's idea. Oh, but you were so worried about Rodini and his popularity with the girls. <laughs> darling, let me worry about him. You worry about that husband of yours who died. What do you mean? Didn't his sudden exit have the district attorney bothered? Oh, no, Myra. It's awfully stuffy here. Excuse me, please. Why, that jealous gun of knife. Don't ever pick a knife drawer for a wife, Mr. Chan. Sharp words from sharp tongue? No, I mean real knives. She used to be in vaudeville. Thinks she's an actor. Dr. Zodia can't help her. She's too conceited. I beg your pardon. Are you Mr. Rodini? No. There's Mr. Rodini over there. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. What? Uh, excuse, please. I said she's too conceited. Good evening, Mr. Rodini. It's awfully nice of you to invite me here tonight. Oh, I'm glad to have you. Make yourself at home. Give the house a good name. Thank you. I'll do my best. Say, Bessie, you know everybody. Who's that fellow over there? He's a new one to me, but he looks interesting. You do not know on guest? I never laid eyes on him before. Pardon me, Mr. Chan. You're wanted on the telephone. I'll show you the way, Charlie. Excuse, please. Hurry back, Mr. Chan. I want all the news about Honolulu. Oh, excuse me a minute, Charlie. The phone's right over there. You can't miss it. How many times do I have to tell you? Didn't you say I could be a guest? Well, I didn't tell you to make a pig out of yourself. Well, if you invite me, you've got to invite my tapeworm. Yes, who, please? Who? It's only me, Pop. Jimmy. I've located Gregory, and he's registered right here in our hotel. Mr. Gregory here at party now. I know it. I sent him a fake invitation so that he'd leave his room and I could search it. You invite Gregory? Keep an eye on him, will you? Goodbye. Uh... Mr. Chan, I thought I recognized you. Good evening. Strange we should meet again so soon. Odds are about 40 to 1 against travel mates meeting within 48 hours. I've made a study of it. Even here, you pursue art of statistics? <laughs> Everywhere. Even in my sleep. Charlie, Eve's just about to go on, and I don't want you to miss her. Now, look, if you folks will bring your chairs up a little closer, we're going to have a little entertainment for you by one of the finest prestigious... Uh, professors. He's a magician. I know you all know him. Needs no introduction to you. The great Rodini. Ta-da! Thank you, thank you. Now, before we go any further, I... uh, Irma, would you mind holding this cage for me, please? <laughs> Just a sample. As you all know, I give two performances a day at the Temple of Magic. I didn't ask you to come here tonight to watch me perform. I want to introduce a little lady from my show whom I consider the world's greatest living mind reader. It gives me great pleasure to present Miss Eve Cairo. Would you mind putting out the lights, please? Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I must ask for absolute quiet. Under hypnosis, Miss Cairo becomes a delicate radio receiving apparatus, tuned to every forceful mind. Thank you. Your eyes close. You will sleep. I am your control. You will seek the mind I name. 
I will seek the mind you name. All right, give me something, anything. What have I in my hand? It is a ring, a gold wedding ring. In it are engraved words. Bopsy loves Toots. <laughs> okay, Toots. Oh, why, it's simply incredible. All right, how about you? No? Very clever. How does he give her signals? I tell you, it's real. They don't use any code. Would you care to try it? I would. What, again? I've been asked a question. What is it? The lady wishes to know if... if she will marry again this year. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's right. Will I? I'm sorry, she cannot predict the future. There's nothing supernatural about Miss Cairo's powers. They've been recognized by scientists as extrasensory perception, or the sixth sense, which we call mental telepathy. Go on, Charlie, test her. What have I in my hand? A card. There are Chinese characters on it. Possible to read characters? I tell you what you do, Charlie. You concentrate on the translation, and Eve will read it from your mind. The Chinese words mean, great happiness follows great pain. Is mine still open book to young lady? Can you tell us what else Mr. Chan is thinking? Dr. Zodiac. I hear the name Dr. Zodiac in his thoughts. Most uncanny. All right, now, let's have something real hard. This last demonstration proves that she doesn't read my mind alone. She can read any strong, dominant thought. Would anyone else care to try it? I would. Will you please concentrate, Miss Cairo? What do I hold in my hand? It is... You... There's someone else. I can't go on. I can't. I hear death among us. I'm frightened. There's evil here. Someone here is thinking murder. That was Charlie, all right. He came in this way. Are you sure? Sure. Hey, Charlie, come out, come out, wherever you are. Please. <laughs> Quiet. Charlie, don't do that. You left in such a hurry like a bloodhound on the trail. I know you're up to no good. He had a hunch you were coming this way. Do not need brass band to commit simple burglary. Burglary? Which window do we use? Better to ring bell like law-abiding citizen to make sure house is empty. Suppose the Turk's here. That'd be a break. He'd either talk or take a punch on the nose. I think we ought to try a back window. No, try Bell first. Oh, only Honorable Sprout. Gee, Pop, I wasn't expecting you. Surprised mutual. You scared the daylights out of me. Can't explain presence here. I wanted to find out who the doctor is for you. How'd you get in? Through an open window upstairs. Where's the light switch? No, no lights. Please, remove disguise. Gee, nothing but black curtains. This must be the spook room. Look! 
ectoplasm most interesting? Ghost filled with hot air. Well, what about Paul Essex's voice? Proof, Dr. Zodiac knew Paul Essex. Doctor, excellent ventriloquist. Uncle, maybe, to Charlie McCarthy. Yeah? What makes all this operate? Mechanical spirits respond to buttons concealed in floor. Dr. Zodiac sit here with feet hidden underneath table and conduct spook show like leader of orchestra. Observe. Boy, oh boy, whoever rigged this up is a mechanical genius. I could use him to design some illusions for my show. So this is how he fools his customers. Favorite pastime of man is fooling himself. Get beside door. Please drop revolver to floor. Mr. Chan makes empty command. Man with gun stand behind you. Drop it. Set it. Now don't try to put anything over on my pop. Please lock door. Go ahead, pop. Ask him anything you want. Finger of death fit glove perfectly. What are you getting at, Charlie? This weapon sought my life at party tonight. Did he try to kill you? Believe, gentlemen, to be same. Gee, Pop, you got him for attempted murder. Light, light! Hey, turn on the lights! Turn on the lights! Come on, put on the lights, will you? Well, clean around there, you had it before. Where's that light button? Where's the church? Where's my pop? Now, wait a minute. People can't vanish into thin air. Come on, we've got to find him. That door's still locked. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Shh. Look. Gentlemen, what are you doing in my house? What have you done to my pop? You have search warrant? Come on, Zodiac, open up and talk fast. Thank you so much. Appreciate bravery. Where's Charlie? Pop! Pop, don't ever do that again. What have you got there? Face rubber, beard false. Massive body and illusion. Elaborate disguise indicate Dr. Zodiac to other people. Wait a minute. Do you mean to say that wire framework is used to make a person appear taller? Exactly. Then Zodiac could be a woman. Or the Turk. Uh, anything possible. But where is the Turk? Make disappearance like ghost. Ran into closet. Found blank wall, but no Turk. Zodiac disguise, hang here. One of these walls must be false. This is the office. He certainly did a good job of concealing this place. Did you find something, Charlie? I found elusive manuscript of Paul Essex. One taken by Gregory. Oh, that. I brought that here. I got it out of Gregory's room at the hotel and left it here when I broke in tonight. You brought it here? Yeah, you didn't give me a chance to tell you before. If befriend donkey, expect to be kicked. How you get in here? Through here. I couldn't find my way out of this place, so I went back out through here, the same way I came in. Then I saw you from the window and let you in. Get a look at the size of this safe. I wonder what a fortune teller's doing with a safe this big. Wish we could open it. Suggest you start zero. Are you kidding? No. Make two turn to left to five. One turn to right. To 18. Two turn back to left to 21. Back to zero. It 
works. How did you get the combination? Found same among possessions of Turkish gentlemen. Oh, it's dark in here. There must be a switch someplace. Here's one. Boy, what a setup. It's a fireproof room. What kind of a business is Zodiac in anyway? Reason for presence here. All kinds of dope about all kinds of people. Please, do not touch. Suspicion confirmed. Unfortunate and illegal experiences of many people hidden in these boxes. Information collected from false psychics in many cities. Organized blackmail. We'll get Kilvain to seize that stuff. Gee, Pop, here's one on Honolulu. People who've lived there. Here's something on somebody named Bessie Sibley. Mrs. Sibley doubtless supply information on many others to buy Dr. Zodiac's silence. I bet he had plenty on her. What have you got there, Charlie? Envelope on Paul Essex. This letter written by Paul Essex, positive proof Dr. Zodiac demand money under threat of exposing past misdeeds. Now we can nail him. Must punish Dr. Zodiac without betraying Paul Essex's secret to widow. Uh, suggest the research of office first. Dr. Zodiac desk. Okay, what a yarn. This dynamite will blow the whole town wide open. We ought to phone Covain. I'll yell if I find anything, Pop. Mm. How to tell fortunes by cards. Maybe that's how he got his start. Almanacs, horoscopes, astrological charts. Oh, what a lot of trash. Say, we better get out of here before the Turk comes back. We are about ready to leave. Hey, something's burning! I'm asking flames to keep secrets of many unfortunate people. But Charlie, the evidence. It is best. We are destroying web of spider. Now let us find spider. Oh, good morning, Pop. Your bed's still made up. Didn't you turn in at all? I've just read most interesting story. Paul's book? Yeah. Any clues in it? Possible truth disguised as fiction. Secret of Pygmy Arrow is story of fake psychic who blackmailed clients. Swell. How does that help us? No help. Last page containing crime solution missing. Yet we know Paul finished, same. Then Gregory must have it. Say, I can't understand why you don't arrest that guy. Please, do not ignore telephone. Hello. Who? Gregory wants to see you. Well, what you wait for? Here is man ready for arrest. Please come up, Mr. Gregory. Boy, am I gonna pin it on him. Would favorite son like to make personal pinch? Oh, you're kidding, Pop. Say, we'd better have a gun. Good morning, Mr. Chan. Good morning. Say, didn't I see you yesterday at the hotel walling wearing glasses and a false mustache? Oh, that. Good morning, sir. Please accept humble hospitality. Thank you very much. Have a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Mr. Chan, I've come to lay my cards on the table. Yes? First of all, I'm not an insurance actuary. Please continue. I'm a private investigator for the Granville Insurance Company. A detective? That's right. Gee, Puff, he's one of us. If I were one of Mr. Chan, I shouldn't be so worried. Modesty forbids acknowledgement. Mr. Chan, I need help. Cooperation possible, Mr. Gregory. If you will answer one question. With pleasure. Why did you remove Paul Essex's briefcase from Clipper? I thought it might furnish me with some leads. I was unable to make head or tail of it. Somebody took it from my room last night. You follow Paul Essex to Honolulu? Yes. 
Why? My company's already had three suicides down there. I thought the islands might furnish the motives. It was a blind alley. The only thing I discovered was that Dr. Zodiac had told Mr. Essex that he would die this month. Dr. Zodiac predict Paul Essex's death? Certainly. You knew I read that radio that came to Mr. Essex. I've been trying to see Zodiac. I can't even get an appointment. Please, what can I do? You get to Zodiac and make him talk, and my company will take care of you. Always willing to cooperate with insurance company. We'll keep you informed of developments. Oh, that's fine. I'll let you know if anything turns up. And I'm awfully glad I came to see you. Uh, thank you. Pleasure is mutual. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh, not at all. Gee, Pop, I certainly had him pegged wrong. You did? The manuscript, he's taken it again. Hey! Morning practice for the track team? Young man imitate puppy dog chasing bumblebee. <laughs> well, Charlie, where do we stand? Did you read that mystery story? Get any leads? Crime never solved by books. I lost him, but the chambermaid said he checked out this morning. Gee, now that manuscript's gone again. Gee, Pop, you're a magician. What was in the briefcase? Very comprehensive San Francisco telephone directory. Gee, nice going, Pop. Hey, what's this all about? Say, I've got an idea. Let's call up the Granville Insurance Company and find out if Gregory's on the level. Telephone all insurance companies yesterday. No one ever heard of Mr. Gregory. I knew it. I knew he was a phony. Say, he might even be Zodiac. One will get you ten. We'll never see Zodiac with his whiskers on again. Not after the way we went through his place last night. It is possible. But Dr. Zodiac, not ordinary criminal. He is man of great ego, with disease known to science as Pseudologia Fantastica. Is it serious? Listen, pathological liars and swindlers suffer from exaggerated fantasy, unleashed vanity, and great ambition, which robs them of caution known to saner men. Or as Pop would put it, Swellhead gives owner more trouble than indigestion. Correction, please. Swellhead sometimes give police more cooperation than criminal mistake. Say, I'll buy that. We might trip Zodiac through his vanity. Criminal egotists find pleasure in laughing at police. Say, if we could only give him a chance to laugh at us, that might bring him out in the open, and then... But how are we going to work it? Suggest artful flattery in form of special challenge from Redini to demonstrate powers before men of science. That's great, Charlie, and I know my paper will go for it. Zodiac took it, hook, line, and sinker. Come on. Please, folks, step aside. Gee, that's a funny-looking knife. Balance weapon used by knife throwers. What is it, a PS? This is missing last page of Paul Essex manuscript. Note was written on back of it. What do you mean? Say, then Gregory must be Zodiac. Unless you dropped same in Zodiac house last night. Gee, Pop, maybe I did. Carelessness may prove blessing in disguise. Hey, I bet you we'll have a full house tonight, I'll bet you. What does it say, Charlie? Does it help us? No, merely that murder was not caused by sword cane as suspected, but by poisoned pygmy arrow. Pygmy arrow? We got a pygmy arrow. Where? Over here. I'll show you. The bow and arrow's gone. I know it was here this morning, because when I was sweeping up, I went by it, and it stopped me. Maybe some souvenir hunter took them. If Zodiac left the note, then he probably took the arrow. At least we know where to find it.
Charlie? What a house. I sock Zodiac's acceptance across the front page and look at that sellout. We've got every door in the place covered. Good. Now, when Zodiac gets here, seal the place up. Don't let anyone out until after the show is over. And be ready for trouble. If we don't see a show tonight, we'll never see one. What's your plan, Pop? Expect to witness most interesting performance, with attention not distracted by too much conversation. Well, we're all set, Charlie. Well, is Dr. Zodiac here yet? No, I don't see him. What a fine spot I'll be in if he doesn't show up. What a fine spot you'll be in if he does. You don't show him up. No, don't even think it. Places, everybody. All set, Mr. Ladini? Yeah, okay. I clear the stage, folks. I kill your house, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, the famous Dr. Zodiac has accepted a challenge to meet me here tonight. Is Dr. Zodiac in the house? Not even the ghost of a whisper, or the whisper of a ghost. <laughs> so, while we're waiting for the renowned doctor of the occult to materialize, I will endeavor to entertain you. Professor, please. Of course, I'm just an ordinary magician myself, one of the old-fashioned kind whose hand is quicker than the eye. Now, watch very closely, ladies and gentlemen. Empty, empty. That's what you thought. <laughs> Flowers for Madame. <laughs> Nothing in here? Nothing in here. <laughs> Empty? Empty. What a fix for a sphinx. Elma, if you please, rotate. Life in the old Sphinx yet. <laughs> Receive Cairo, ladies and gentlemen. A very charming and mysterious young lady who will assist me in deceiving you. Excuse me, please. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for our first illusion, I will require some witnesses here on the stage. Are there a couple of good witnesses in the house? You know, the kind you like to have when you bump into the other fellow's car? <laughs> How about you, sir? Oh, no, thank you. Come on, don't be bashful. Leave your watch and wallet with your wife. Oh, she's not your wife. <laughs> Well, spotlight. Charlie, stand up. Come on, go ahead, Charlie. Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Mr. Charlie Chan, the world's foremost whodunit celebrity. I'm going to ask Mr. Chan to honor my performance by acting as a witness of my illusions. And if I can trick him, I'm good. <laughs> this will give you a chance to watch Zodiac while he works. Hey, Pop. And you too, Jimmy. And Jimmy Chan, ladies and gentlemen, a chip off the old chopstick. <laughs> And this gentleman completes our gold panel jury. Deputy Chief Kilbane of the San Francisco Police Department. <laughs> now stand wherever you wish. Steps, please. Zodiac, I believe. Spotlight. Would you care to come up on the stage, Doctor? I was just about to toss off one of my best illusions. I'll give you a chance to unmask me, Doctor, before I unmask you. That would be a pleasure, Mr. Adini. That's the spirit. Stand wherever you wish, Doctor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before I continue, I want to say in fairness to our distinguished guest, that I do not intend in any way to ridicule his faith in the supernatural. But I will prove that I can duplicate anything he does with the same old bag of tricks that have been mystifying gullible humanity since the first magician laid an egg. <laughs> My initial endeavor will be to nullify the law of gravity through levitation, an art practiced by the holy men of Tibet who are credited with being able to project their bodies through space. Thank you. Now watch Miss Cairo and particularly the table. 
We are under observation by a supercritical jury of witnesses. Nothing below. A beautiful lady above. No wires connected to the table. No mechanical devices. Yet, unless your eyes deceive you, the table and the young lady are rising into the fourth dimension of space, supported by nothing but thin air. Levitation was a religious rite of the ancient world, known to the priests of Chaldea, a guarded secret in the temples of Babylon. A fearsome ceremony of the pagan gods who cried for sacrifice and before whom victims vanished and disappeared. An arrow struck directly in her. Death instantaneous. Boy, what a finish for Dr. Zodiac. Who is he, Pop? It's the Turk. Wait a minute. Hostiles! Everybody stay right where you are. No one is to leave this theater. <whistles> Have everybody go back to their seats. Please, remote body out there. Back to your seat, lady. You have no right to keep me here. Let me by. Sit down. Look, somebody threw this bow in here. Get bow, please. This is what he was shot with, all right. Gee, Pop, I didn't mean to do that. No matter. Accident proves arrow not shot from bow. Weather beaten wood too old to put driving force behind bowstring. Well, that's from my exhibit in the lobby. It's the pygmy bow. Problem number one, then. How was arrow which killed Turkish gentleman projected into his body? Someone must have been close enough to stab him. It must have been done from the stage. Maybe, maybe not. The lights were out long enough for anyone to come up on the stage and then gotten back to the seat. Makes problem more difficult. Takes in entire audience. Suggest confining yourselves to one who could have been within striking distance of victim. When did you leave stage, Mr. Radini? As soon as the lights changed. I follow the table down the aisle. I'm at the back of the house when Eve makes her entrance. Bradini must have been in the aisle. He dropped this wand beside my seat in the second row. Hello, Stuart. What are you doing here? Gilvain? Say, do you know him too? Sure. Charlie, I want you to meet Stuart Salisbury, the investigator for the Granville Insurance Company. Then he is a detective? But now his name's Salisbury. That's why the insurance company didn't know anyone named Gregory. May chalk up one error against blundering pennant. Mr. Salisbury, you were sitting in second row? I was interested in watching you work, Mr. Chan. I knew you were on the stage for a purpose. I wanted to be nearer to you and Dr. Zodiac. Thank you so much. May see wand, please? This is wand used in floating table illusion? Yes, I guess I dropped it in the aisle as I ran back to the stage. <laughs> Silver tip wand, more prolific than silkworm. <laughs> You're stealing my act, Charlie. Perhaps have extra one handy? Up sleeve, maybe? Say, I shouldn't have let you watch me so closely. An orchid for you, Charlie. Thank you so much. Miss Cairo, please, just when you cease to float on flying table. I wasn't on the table, Mr. Chan. I was in the wings waiting for my entrance. Not on table? Very mysterious. Just a minute, Charlie. You don't mean to say that Eve had anything to do with this. Please. I'm merely trying to place positions of people on stage to get clear picture of crime. Well, I don't quite get you, Charlie. But let's place them all in the positions they were in before the lights went out. Very excellent suggestion. Would request, Mr. Radini, you start act all over again from point where Miss Cairo is placed on table. Right. <laughs> now, you people in the audience, please settle down and be patient. They're going to stage Radini's act again. Oh. We want all the cooperation you can give us. The person sitting next to you might be the murderer we're looking for. We'll need volunteer to take place of victim. You will oblige? What? Me be the murdered man? But I ain't a good subject, Mr. Chan, I ain't. Mm. No. Can request you assume humble position, Mr. Lewis? To break a story, I do anything, Charlie. Thank you so much. Miss Cairo, it will be necessary for you again to take place on table. 
No, no, I can't do it. What's the matter, honey? No, I wouldn't advise you to use Eve, Mr. Chan. She's different from the rest of us. High-strung, nervous temperament, sensitive to things like this. One moment, please. Have thought. Will not be necessary to use young lady. Uh, let everyone assume original positions. You, Miss Cairo, were in wings. Mr. Radini, you were on platform, please. Who's going to ride on the table? Number two son. He long had weakness for displaying histrionic ability. Here is opportunity to disguise self as sleeping beauty. Who, me? Take a ride on that table? Oh, but flying makes me seasick, Pop. Go. All right, Jimmy, come on. Come on, hop up. You're going to get a lot of surprises. OK, Charlie? Lights! Watch Miss Cairo, and particularly the table. We are under observation by a supercritical jury of witnesses. Nothing below. No wires connected to the table. No the device. Yet unless your eyes deceive you, the table and the lady are rising into the fourth dimension of space. Supported by nothing but thin air. Levitation was a religious rite of the ancient world, known as the priests of Chaldea. A guarded secret of the ancient temples of... Wrong. Radini didn't finish his speech. Light! Light! Turn on the light! Ah! How did that happen? Do something. All right, folks. All right. Sit your seat. Be quiet. All right. Get to his dressing room. Why, he's wounded. Get him to his dressing room. Call a doctor. Now, keep calm, folks. Go. Get everybody out of that aisle. Lady, lady, sit down, lady. Be calm, be collected. Don't get excited. That won't get anything. Take his coat off. He's bleeding. Come on, come on. Get him to his dressing room. Well, Charlie, if this don't send me back to Billy Goat Hill pounding pavement, I'm an Eskimo. Not necessary to take such icy view of situation. Matters progressing most interestingly. Interestingly? For who, Radini? Fortunately, only wound in shoulder, induced by this knife. Where did you get that? On step. It is brother to one used to pin Dr. Zodiac's note to door of theater. It's a cinch. Whoever threw that knife is the same one who knocked off the Turk. That's right, and we're through playing theater. If I can only figure the angle that knife was thrown from, it'll give me a clue to where the killer was standing. Position of killer not so important to anxious parent as position of number two son who took trip on mysterious flying table. Oh, he's in the cellar. All he has to do is come upstairs from downstairs. Oh, show away, please. Surely, come on. I've got an idea. I've been trying to figure out the angle this knife was thrown from. I figured... Captain Kilvane, will you tell your stupid cops that they must let me be with my husband? Now, just a minute, young lady. Nobody can talk to him until after I've questioned them. And I have a few questions for you, too. You're a fine detective. Letting one man be murdered right under your eyes. And then setting the stage so they could try to kill my husband. I've tried to be calm. Come out of there! Come out of there! Jimmy! Did not know theater provided elevator service. That comes from inside the Sphinx. Mr. Chan, I want to go to my husband. The detectives won't let me see him. Thought Radini's dressing room was on stage. It is, but there's an entrance from down here, too. Sun seems to have disappeared as completely as flying table. Maybe he went up into the boss's dressing room. Come with me, Mr. Chan. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Hope somebody sees something around here pretty soon. Well, I wish I was back with my trained seals. You could try a cross stitch, the kind we use in appendix operations. Please explain absence of pants and self. Gee, Papa, I had an accident. Get dressed quickly. Disappearance take one year of father's life. Uh, you are doctor? Uh, how is Mr. Radini's shoulder? Not too bad. It's only a flesh wound. He's suffering from shock right now. I fixed him up, and I think we'd better let him go home as quickly as possible. Most fortunate escape. Can offer no solution as to who make attempt on life? I haven't the slightest idea, Charlie. I just reached the bottom of the steps and I felt a blow. And my shoulder seemed to be on fire. That's all I remember. It must have been thrown from the audience. And if it was, I... Uh, recommend we remove cells from dressing room and allow Mr. Radini needed rest. Excuse, please. 
Now, look here, young woman. You knew all about this even before the lights came up. And before anyone else knew that Rodini had been clipped with a knife. How did you know it? I've told you before, I can sense things like that. I had a mental vision of him lying there with a knife stuck in his shoulder. Mental telepathy confirmed by scientific investigation. I'm convinced, young lady, strange power can be of utmost assistance to us in apprehending murder. Better to probe through penetrating mind of one girl than try to sift contents of whole theater. All right, then, go ahead. I'm in this with you. I might as well stick. I'll tell the audience, Pop. One moment. Refrain from showing to audience seat of pants, please. Oh, I'll take care of that. I'll wear this coat. Ladies and gentlemen, my father has requested me to... Uh... <laughs> my father has requested that I call your attention... My father has requested that I call your... This isn't my fault. Recommend you imitate excellent example of Sphinx and keep silent. Ask you will please excuse amateur exhibition of magic by ambitious offspring and request you will again lend most necessary cooperation. With assistance of Miss Cairo, we'll try to find solution of most perplexing crime. Can assure you will witness most scientific and remarkable demonstration of mental telepathy. Electrician, you will turn off all lights except one on mirror, please. You will read thoughts in my mind until dominant thought of killer comes to you. Concentrate. Close eyes, please. I'm now your control. You are my control. Your lips will speak my thoughts as they come to you. I will speak your thoughts. I get the impression of a strange, mysterious room. There is a man. It is Dr. Zodiac. He has learned secrets of people's lives and uses his information to blackmail them. I see one of his victims. He is in an airplane. He commits suicide because Dr. Zodiac threatens him with disgrace. That man's wife is here in the theater. Her heart is filled with bitterness. There is another woman here who is helping Dr. Zodiac. But she fears him. Only his death can bring her freedom. I see another man here, a rival, who has staked his reputation on unmasking Dr. Zodiac tonight. There is another who fears the loss of his position and prestige because Dr. Zodiac has outwitted him. And a young man who believes Dr. Zodiac is interfering with his romance trying to separate him from the girl he loves. There's someone confusing our contact, Mr. Chan. Go on, please. Yes, I have your control again. There is a woman who is filled with jealousy and hatred. Dr. Zodiac is trying to influence her. Mr. Chan, there's a mind here that is fighting me trying to keep your thoughts from me. Continue, please. He is frightened, desperate. It is, it is Dr. Zodiac. He is not dead. He is here in this theater. Zodiac here? Then who was the Turk? We'll soon learn. Concentrate, please. The man who was murdered was Dr. Zodiac's servant who is impersonating him here tonight to throw the police off the trail. What was motive for murder, please? The servant was the only one who knew his master's secret. 
Zodiac killed him to silence him and make the world believe that Dr. Zodiac was dead. Who is Dr. Zodiac? It is... It is... Something is keeping it from me. A control stronger than yours. Killer is trying to prevent you from reading my thoughts. Make effort, please. I'm trying. It's coming closer. It's filled with evil, with thoughts of murder. It's Dr. Zodiac. He's ready to strike again. Strike, lights! It's Radini. Fred. My boss. Otherwise known as Dr. Zodiac. Very clever to have Turk impersonate you at Seance and thus avoid suspicion. Nice work. But you'll never convict me of killing the Turk. Contradiction, please. We'll demonstrate. Silver tip one used in floating table illusion, not same as this one, which you carry up sleeve from which you produce orchid. Mechanism, make most potent murder weapon. Observe. Easy for magician to confuse picture of crime, even to inflicting wound in own shoulder to avert suspicion. All right, men, take them out. So sorry. I didn't know, Mr. Chan. I never even suspected. Radini sure was covered up, but we licked this case. Appreciate valuable assistance, but please remember obvious clues like tricks in magic usually prove deceptive. You bet. From now on, I'll be just like you. I'll keep both feet right on the ground. 